Got another, actually this is a fairly remote spot. I was guided here by runes and I brought a stone for my father. Oops. I don't take that out, I, oh, I, don't, I never will, so let me just take it out here. It's not of any particular shape, it's just the one that the chiefs gave me. And I'm gonna, I think, lay that at the river today. I had a dream with my father and I was thinking more and more about it and I thought, I think my father probably has accepted that he's never gonna see or talk to me again. And that's his his spirit letting go. And I also remember in the dream that my feet were rooted to the ground and I was afraid, even though I was happy to see him. And uh, if I saw my father, we could cry, we could hug, we could do this, we could do that. I haven't talked to him for 15 years, I haven't wanted to. And before that, I didn't talk to him for 15, 20 years. I didn't want to. And uh, I think, uh, at least I hope that he knows, if there's anything he's probably learned from me, is that I'm too much trouble. And I've learned from him, I'm too much trouble. I was always too much trouble for him. And that's just a fact. And you have to deal with that. Um, and two, that he's just going to be threatened and hurt if he sees me again, because when he feels that love or that reconciliation, that's it doesn't go beyond that. And then it's over, and then it's just back to normal. Like nothing happened. And that's how my dad has lived his life. And it's actually dangerous. It's not just like in some sentimental sense, I wish you would remember how painful everything is. It's because that pain is there, especially at the degrees that it exists and the nature that it exists and the prevalence in my family that it exists and in society that it exists. There's something innate in the mind that says, on an ethical basis, don't we have to be improving our ability to protect ourselves from this type of awful thing descending into the ranks of our family, this disease? In deference to which, you have to show some evidence that you've learned something from this about life and the world. Mistakes have been made when family bonds get broken. You know, mistakes have been made. And they, they should put the brakes on things. And whether you like it or not, they do put the brakes on things. And what happens is that people busying around are actually have brakes on actually growing in their mind. It's a break. It's a break, and it's a break, and it's a total break. It's a cleaving, and it's a break. And it puts the brakes on a lot of movement, except going forward in civilization. And it's a virtual movement of inordinate cost. A virtual movement of inordinate cost that demands that whatever way of life you practice, that you have to extract those costs from other people, including your children. It is a, a religion where these costs must be born and extracted. And that's the effect of all the philosophy of the white world, of white civilization. And it's put into everything. When a white cop touches a black man for no reason, it's in there. And black people know it. And it would be good if it was just white people. It's not. Any more than it's just Jewish people. But I'm speaking out against white people because I am a white person. And I think we owe it to the rest of the world to speak out about it from a heart and a, and a personal sense, and from a personal place, connecting my personal emotions in my own family. I want, I want to wish my father peace. My father didn't know how to deal with me. Uh, I didn't tolerate lying. I didn't tolerate dishonorable behavior, no matter what has happened to you. And uh, that sense of him coming toward me and not being able to move, I think that's something my father experienced from older men, 